Thanks, Whitney. I just uh, wanted to just share a few verses today um, on uh, seeking to please our Heavenly Father and, and the testimony that Jesus had in that and the warning that's there. Um, and then Andrew's going to share a bit on uh, a bit more on Father's Day and also for the grads. Um, we've been studying uh, through Hebrews on our Friday night studies, and um, I was definitely encouraged uh, this Friday looking at Hebrews 8 and some of the promise of the new covenant, which is that God's laws would be written in our hearts and in our minds. And just that 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 is something that is, uh, I would say, a journey and a and a a growth as we as we walk with the Lord. It's something He wants to increasingly produce in our lives, so that we live lives that are not like I know we wouldn't say we're under the old covenant, but you can still live a life that's kind of based on external do's and don'ts and trying to live by a set of rules that if I do this, it's good. And if I'm okay with God, if I do that, and instead of actually just having an inner conviction that says, I want to live my life to please my heavenly father. I want my life to glorify him. And with that comes saying, I'm not going to be worried about what others say for the young people. I'm not going to be worried about what my friends say for those of us who are adults, not worried about what even like when Jesus says, like, you got to love me more than those around you, like he even uses a language like hate, wife, and children, these different things. I don't think he's like, we all know, right? You know the rest of scripture. You know, Jesus doesn't actually want us to hate our wives or our children. He wants us as fathers to lay down our lives for our wives and children and deny ourselves that we can love them as Jesus loved the church. But when it says hate, it's talking about those times where we have come to a place where we can actually hear our father's voice and say, you know what? I, that's, that's my supreme priority. Everything else has to fall into line behind following and obeying the will of my heavenly father. And, um, yeah, I was just reflecting a few verses on that this morning and I'll, I'll read some of them, but that's, that's the broader theme that was in my heart as I read these things. Cause I don't know, I just, as I reflect on I know that's the life that I want. The other thing that's interesting is, I think, as we purpose in our hearts to do the will of our Heavenly Father, which is revealed in the Scripture, this is not, I'm not trying to point us to something that's outside of taking the counsel that God has given us through His Word, and especially, most importantly, that the Holy Spirit speaks it to us and imprints it on our heart and shows us God's ways in all of this. But, for me, I was just, like, the more as I've walked and begin to understand my Heavenly Father and understand His ways, it's like I get more clarity on how awesome it is and what a good Father we serve. And it's like it says in, I think it's Corinthians, where Paul says that God has blinded the eyes of the unbelieving, right? So they will not see the glory of the gospel in the face of Jesus Christ. So the unbelieving, those who do not believe, their eyes are blinded to the glory of God. And when we believe, we start to see, right? But I just was reflecting, I think it, it's, it's more and more, right? Like as we, as we purpose in our hearts to do God's will, as we purpose in our hearts that that is going to be our priority and... I would say when we purpose in our hearts that when it comes into conflict with our own flesh and will, which is the, that is the test in following God's will. It's when, when we say, I'm not going to do my will, but the will that I, like what my heavenly father is leading me in and, and taking up our cross in that way. As we do that, we start, God reveals himself more and more. And it's through Jesus Christ that he reveals himself more and more. And we start to see more and more how much of a good father he is. And I, I say that, like, from my own headspace. If I were to, like, I, I feel like I'm, like, 10 feet, like, I'm barely started on this journey. Like, I, I don't even, like, I just, but any progress is good progress. And because I think some of us who have heard certain testimonies and realize that part of the 
wonder of the new covenant is we get to know God as our Father. That They didn't know that in the old covenant. But we can make mental assent to that. You can say, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray and say, and when I pray, I'm going to pray to my Father. Or, like, there's different things we can do, but what we need is the revelation of the fact that we serve a good Father and that He loves us and that his will for us is perfect there is nothing better for our lives than to do his will and as we get that revelation and it sinks into our hearts it allows us to see his goodness and it also helps us to know that as his will contradicts our own and their suffering it helps us to take up our cross and deny ourselves because we believe we have a good father we believe the situations he allows are for our good and for his purposes which are which are good towards us to give us just every blessing that's in store for us and i just i don't know like i just was reading this and i just i want more of it i can say that in my own heart i feel like just just i get little bits here and there but i want i want to grow in that and so i'm just going to read a few verses about jesus and in these verses that i'm going to read it is in john chapter 5 Jesus was talking about the testimony he had. He had a testimony that was from his father. And it, the connection here is that he had a testimony that he pleased God. And that was because of how he lived his life. And I was sort of thinking about that, like, what testimony do I desire? What testimony do I desire? And I think we could all mentally say, yeah, yeah, I want a testimony that I please God. But I was just challenged to say, like, you know what? Even if everyone in this church says Joel's a great guy, like, wow, Joel is just just awesome, really, really good spiritually, just great guy. That's, I mean, that's good to have. That's good to have. As Christians, we should have a good testimony amongst one another and amongst those outside the church. But ultimately, and most importantly, the testimony that we need is that our Heavenly Father is pleased with us. Because He sees everything. He sees what's going on in secret. He sees what happens at my house yesterday, even when none of you others were there. He sees what goes on in my thought life. He sees it all. And that is the testimony we want, that He is pleased with us. And if that's our purpose, it's like, it's such a good guide, right? Like, it's such a good guide for you young people, right? Like, you might be able to pull the wool over mom and dad's eyes you might be able to have others maybe not quite know where you're at in different things or you might be seeking what to do in different situations even if like the goal needs to be that our heavenly father is pleased with us that is the guide for our lives and that will help us in making decisions help us in how we handle ourselves with our friends and the different things that life brings to us if that's it's not whether it's not like Yes, if, you're, if their Heavenly Father is pleased with us, I'm sure your parents will also be pleased. But even if they're not, the goal needs to be that our Heavenly Father is pleased. And if we're just living a life that's just kind of for show and on the outside, like, in the end, it's not going to be worth it. In the end, it's not going to be worth it. Like, we need to make it our hope. And if, it, if you're struggling with that, like, repent and ask the Lord to say, Father, make my desire to do your will that's the promises of his new covenant that he would put his law in our hearts and our minds like help me father i don't want to continue on trying to live a life of compromise of doing stuff for myself and chasing after things that are corrupting me and then trying to clean it up a bit because i'm worried about what others may think like no like i want to please you and do your will and have that be the guide for my life so that's uh um john Five verse 30 it says i can do this is jesus speaking i can do nothing on my own initiative as i hear i judge and my judgment is just because i do not seek my own will but the will of him who sent me if i alone testify my about myself my testimony is not true there is another who testifies of me and i know that the testimony which he gives about me is true so in that it can seem a little jesus is saying some things in there that can seem a little bit confusing but at the core of it he's saying that i have a testimony from my heavenly father 
And you can think about that. What are some of the times when the father testified about Jesus? Well, the one was at his baptism, which I'm not going to flip there for the sake of time, but in Matthew 4, 17, we know that when Jesus was baptized, what did, what did the voice say from heaven? This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And why was that? Because of all the works and wonders he had done? No, it hadn't even started yet. It's because of how he had lived his life for the 30 years leading up to that point. It pleased his heavenly father. And that was his testimony that the father spoke from heaven, that it was his son and he was well pleased in him. And then elsewhere in here, Jesus says that the works and the miracles that God has given him to do also testify him as they could only have come from the heavenly father. But the key to that is what we can see here is how come he had that testimony. It says it in verse 30, because I do not seek my own will but the will of him who sent me. And then he goes on to say, you've sent to John and he has testified to the truth, but the testimony I re- which I receive is not from man, but I say these things so that you may be saved. So he's saying like, like the testimony of John was for others. The testimony of John was so that others could be, to know about the Christ and to know that he was the Lamb of God and to make the way for Christ. But Jesus was saying that ultimately the testimony that he receives, even that, as great as it was, that wasn't his litmus test. His, he, wasn't, he wasn't satisfied that John was, was pleased with him. And I know I'm speaking kind of in things that are kind of weird to even think about because we know that John had to speak of Christ this way because he was the Messiah. But John, he's saying, like, even in that, even in the testimony of John, that was not my goal. My goal was to please my Heavenly Father. I'm not interested in the testimony of man. I'm interested in a testimony. There's only one testimony that mattered to Jesus Christ. Was that he was pleasing to his Heavenly Father. That was, that was the one that mattered. And I think for all of us, like, if there's one thing we can take away, like, it could be that, That's the testimony that matters to us. That we are pleasing to our Heavenly Father. And that, like, that that is the ultimate goal for our lives. That we would be pleasing and glorifying to our Heavenly Father. And everything else can line up behind that. I'll just read a couple more verses here. And I'm going to read some verses here, verse 41. And I don't say this to say that I want to have a, like, there is a danger in trying to be a, a church or a people that are, trying to please others or impress others. We know that's where the Pharisees stumbled into. But the Lord can show you whether that's a danger of where you're at. But I think the more important thing, when I read these verses, when I read them this morning, it was the emphasis on how much Jesus prioritized the testimony of that he was pleasing to his heavenly Father. He was not interested in the testimony of men. Like, even if everyone would say he's a good guy, That was not what he was interested in. He was interested in the fact that he was pleasing to his heavenly father. In verse 41, he says, I do not receive glory from men, but I know that you do not have the love of God in yourselves. If I come in my father's name and you do not receive me, or I have come in my father's name and you do not receive me, if another comes in his own name, you will receive him. How can you believe believe when you receive glory from one another And you do not seek the glory that is from the one and only God. So Jesus was saying there, like, the priority needs to be that we are seeking the glory that comes from our Heavenly Father, that comes from God. That's not, we're not interested in seeking the commendation or the praises of men. That our focus and our goal is that we're seeking the glory of God. And I can tell you that if if that is our priority, for those that matter, to those that love the Lord, we will have a good testimony. There's no contradiction here in where whether you'll have a good testimony with those who love the Lord or not. But it's just about what is our priority, what is our focus, and what is our what is our guiding principle that is a that is that is that is motivating us in our decisions and helping us and guiding us in our lives. I just take from these verses that it should be that we're seeking the glory of God. So I'll just read a couple more verses on this. uh, If you turn to John chapter 12. Chapter 
sorry. <laughs> I was wondering why that didn't make sense. There we go. Chapter 12. In John chapter 12, verse 42, it says, Nevertheless, many even of the rulers believed in him, but because of the Pharisees, they were not confessing him for fear that they would be put out of the synagogue. For they loved the approval of men rather than the approval of God. So it's a warning here again of those who were starting to believe in Jesus Christ, but they were derailed because they sought the approval of men rather than the approval of God. Their, their priority was off. And because of that, they weren't willing to confess Jesus. They weren't willing to confess. They, like, they, were, they actually believed it in their minds. like They knew that Jesus was the Messiah. They were starting to believe some of this. But they wouldn't say it to anyone because they loved the approval of men rather than the approval of God. And I don't know. Like I, I'll be honest. As I read some of these verses today, they were, they were applicable to me. But I'll, for some of it, for me, it was for you young people. I'll be honest as I read these things. Because in my life right now, like, thankfully, like, a lot of my friends are in this body. <laughs> my wife and I, praise God, are largely aligned in what we believe and, and our focus and what we share. And I mean, praise God for me, I even work in the workplace where there's a lot of other Christians. And, and so I can say for me, I still have my tests, don't get me wrong. But I would say the tests as they come lately have not as been as strong about having to difficulty confessing Christ because it's going to be harder persecution i'm just being honest with you here it just that's what the lord has allowed i have other tests about denying my will and not living for myself don't get me wrong there but as i look at you young people especially like you grads right like i don't know what holds next for you maybe some of you're going to go to university trade school or whatever comes like this is the test right like do you love god's approval or do you love man's approval because it's gonna come as you are in your circles like I described a circle for me where there's a lot of alignment, but as we have friends and as you're outside at school or other things, the test is going to come. Like who's Because you're going to know in your heart. You're going to know in your heart the convictions you've had, whether it's because of how you've been raised or because of things God's shown you himself about how he wants you to live. But it's going to come. They're, they're going to be in contradiction to what's going on around you, what others may think is appropriate or think is i don't want to use words that are like uh, don't even like cool i know that's a dumb word but like you know what i'm saying like i think you guys know what i'm saying right like this this is where the rubber hits the road as to whether you're going to seek the approval of men or seek the approval of god and i want to encourage you seek the approval of god it is so much better in the long run and i can say that like i don't even i sit here and i like I, i think back on those times in my life like, I, I can say my testimony was such, I didn't have to walk that road. I'm going to tell you guys here, honestly, I did not have to walk that road. I sought my own will. I conformed, and to the extent there was any Christianity in my life when I, in my life when I was your age, it was complete and utter hypocrisy. Complete and utter hypocrisy. I did one thing on Saturday night. And I'd put the Christian clothes on on Sunday and try and wear that to please a few people, maybe please my parents. But it was a complete and utter hypocrisy. But I do know that if I know, knew now, or I knew then what I know now, it would have been tough. It would have been tough. Because so few, so few of the people that I knew were actually seeking to please God with their lives. It was not a priority. Many would have gone to church. Most of my friends went to church. A few didn't, but most did. But very few were actually seeking to live lives that were glorifying to God. It's just the facts. The way is narrow. And it is difficult. And I just think for you young people, as you go forward, like this is going to be a test. I'm just saying it's going to be a test as to whether you're seeking God's approval or men's approval. But if you purpose in your heart to seek God's approval, your life will be blessed. You'll be spared so much, so much of the difficulty and the baggage that comes with living a life of compromise. And I look forward to seeing that testimony. I look forward to seeing that testimony in some of you that you actually 
avoided some of the pitfalls that many of your parents made. I'm not saying your parents have done it perfectly, but they've given you an opportunity to hear God's truth and make a choice as to how you're going to go. And I do believe there will be a wonderful testimony to those of you that decide, you know what, I'm going to seek God's approval and not men. I'm willing to stand apart and be separate. Because it's a cross to bear. I can tell you this. When I did, when God did get a hold of my life, I lost every single friend. Not one army. But what has God given me? Gave me a restored relationship with my brother, which has been a tremendous blessing in my life. Gave me many friends who are now encouraging me and spurring me on in my walk with Christ. It's been a blessing. But there was a dividing line that I had to say, even at that time, I'm not going to seek the approval of men. I'm going to be willing to stand apart and be separate. I'm going to seek to live a life that pleases God. And it comes for all of us, but I don't want this to be heavy. I I mean, (laughs) easy to say. (laughs) It's always a contradiction. There is hope, and it is a blessed journey, and we do have a merciful Heavenly Father, because the other thing is we'll find there's mistakes along the way, and that we have a perfect example for us in Jesus Christ, but we make mistakes along the way. Even now, I can think of times where I make mistakes and realize that, you know what? I wish I wouldn't have done that. I wish I would have chosen to say something differently, or maybe I put a little bit of a muzzle over my mouth because I didn't want to testify and confess to the truth that I know is in my heart. And I repent, and I get back up. And you guys can do that too. But if our purpose and our desire is to say, you know what, I do want to seek God's approval, and I do want to have that as a guide in my life, then he will help us, even when we make mistakes, even when we have to clean up a mess because we made a mistake. God will do that, and he will help us. He's a merciful and loving and good Heavenly Father. But he does desire for us to have this attitude in ourselves that we're going to seek his approval and put that as the priority in our lives. I'll stop there.